Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 12th, 2017 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, one of the fallouts, of course, of last week's Java Struts vulnerability announcements is that there are a lot of other vendors that include Java Struts 2 as part of their products. So we are seeing some of these advisories now trickling out. Most notably, last Friday, Cisco released a pretty extensive advisory with a list of all their products that are used using Java struts. Of course, Cisco makes much more than switches and routers. There are a lot of web apps, like for example, the Cisco WebEx meetings server, that would be a part of it. A lot of their voice and unified communication devices do include web applications that are relying on Java struts. So take a look at this advisory if you're using any of these Cisco products in order to make sure that you are patching these products. And I've talked in the past about anti-malware applications that are intercepting TLS. That's often a necessary evil because you do want anti-malware to be able to inspect application traffic that is TLS encrypted. Typically, this shouldn't really, if properly done, cause any problems because it is done on the host itself. I'm not talking about proxy servers and the like, but essentially little local host proxies that these anti-malware applications intercept. Now, the emphasis here is it should not cause any problems, but often it does. If, for example, certificates aren't properly created, if TLS is downgraded, then you may actually no longer be able to connect with your web browser to certain sites. Google Chrome now went a step further in order to better inform the user about such applications. If a connection fails because of an application installed on the host itself that does intercept TLS, then future versions of Chrome will attempt to identify the particular application to make it easier for the user to, for example, disable or maybe even patch that application. The latest beta version of Chrome has this feature installed. You have to enable it. It's not enabled by default. It will likely show up in version 63 of Chrome, which is scheduled to appear in December. Now, on the other hand, in order to identify malicious TLS connections, it isn't always necessary to actually intercept the traffic. There are some tricks that can be applied just by passively observing the encrypted traffic. I've talked in the past, for example, about some work Cisco has done in order to fingerprint TLS handshakes using various TLS options. Also, recently we had the JA3 project released by Salesforce, which is an open source project to do collect these fingerprints and to identify applications. Well, Cisco now went a step further with this idea. They actually used some machine learning algorithms in order to identify TLS connections as either malicious or not. Malicious here being that the connection was caused by malware. Now, they did have some reasonable success here and they were able to identify identify 90% of the malicious connections. However, there are exceptions. One particular malware family that they're pointing out is Tridex, which is really good in emulating existing browsers. And they only had a reconnaissance rate here for 78%, which isn't really quite adequate. As usual, I think that is still a very valid and valuable approach. Don't make the mistake to discard it because there are ways around this approach. It still does identify a good number of malicious connections quite accurately. And of course, the big advantage here is that the approach is purely passive. No interception is required. So this is something that can scale quite well and is relatively 
easy to implement. And starting this week, certificate authorities are supposed to check a new DNS record. I've mentioned it before, it's the CAA, the Certificate Authority Authorization Record. With this particular DNS record, a domain is able to identify which certificate authorities are authorized to issue certificates. Now, if you don't have the record, nothing really changes, but certificate authorities are supposed to check that you actually have this record configured. If you do have it configured, then they will not issue a certificate unless this particular certificate authority is listed in this certificate authorization authority authorization record now problem being here that uh, komodo already was found violating this very new standard apparently in a post to a mailing list a researcher reported that he actually added that caa record to his domain and only identified let's encrypt as the only authorized certificate authority for his domain well uh, komodo nevertheless did issue a certificate for his domain. Overall, uh, not too many users actually implement this record at this point. A lot of registrars, last time I checked, for example, GoDaddy do not allow you to actually configure that record yet. So I would mark this up to startup issues with this particular standard. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.